What is up YouTube? So this is a short video of the Android screen replacement um, I recently did in my 2011 BMW 650i convertible. Um, I'll do a full more in-depth kind of feature review video following this one um, but for now this will just be a quick uh, five things I love and five things I hate about it as well as talking about the installation. Um, so this unit is the same as far as I can tell as a unit sold by Avenue USA um, although this was purchased I believe from the OEM on Alibaba. The price was also a lot better. I paid um, about 500 US for it and it came with everything in the box that you would expect. The GPS cable, um, the T-harness to connect it to the car, etc. It didn't include the external microphone which I was a little bit bummed about but that's not the end of the world. Um, this is the original screen that was in the car which is really just a dumb screen and if anything the new one is an upgrade purely in aesthetics and visual quality because it's a higher definition screen and um, with better color saturation so as you can see it's got the CIC interface currently running on it and it looks really good I mean the, the color is a lot deeper and crisper um, and it, it runs just as fast so if anything it saves you the couple of hundred dollars that you would want to spend on getting a new screen if yours was um, getting on and, and yours were just not looking all that great. Now in terms of the installation it it really wasn't all that difficult if you know what you're doing. Like, I, I've worked extensively on BMWs and um, I know the little intricacies and obviously having access to BMWs extensive library of technical literature also helps. But essentially, installation-wise, is you would remove the wood trim, you would remove the climate control panel, and behind the climate control panel is the actual CIC computer, which is just a couple of screws that you undo and take it out. The OEM screen itself has two screws up top, um, which you have to get out, and they're a bit tough to get out just because of the the rake of the windscreen, but it's really not all that difficult. Um, and most of the screws are the same size, so it doesn't even matter where, where you put them or which order they go back in. So removing the screen is really simple, it's just taking out those two screws, taking out two screws at the bottom behind this climate panel, and then the screen comes off really easy. It's got a um, four-pin screen connector, a purple connector, and then it's got a flat power and diagnostic cable, so something to bear in mind when replacing the original um, CID with uh, Android or, or similar kind of system, is that the car's diagnostic systems will now give a control unit error for the CID because there's nothing to connect to, so there will always be an error stored in the memory log for that, but it really doesn't matter, it's a dumb screen that really only did one thing and now you're replacing it with a uh, fully functioning, basically a computer. So removing out the, the head unit itself is really simple, it just it's behind the climate panel, you take it out, it's got a whole slew of connectors for the various antennas and then of course the quad lock. You take the optical out of the original harness, place it into the harness that comes with the head unit, connect the two up as a T and basically just push all the cables back. In the case of the 6 series, the space behind the CIC is cavernous, there's a lot of space. So finding a place to put the cables really isn't all that tough. Now here's the challenge. After connecting everything up, switch the car on, boots up perfectly, screens looking all great and beautiful, but the iDrive controller isn't working. So in the installation instructions, they actually neglect to mention that you have to connect the iDrive up to the T-harness that's connected to the CIC computer. That in itself makes the install a little bit more complicated because now you have to remove the wood trim around the shifter, you have to remove this entire piece of bolster basically, um, which requires you to remove trim panels on the side. On both sides, you have to re remove some screws. This entire unit has to be lifted up and taken out just so you can get to the little connector for the iDrive, which the original car harness plugs into the T-harness of the unit, and then the unit plugs into the iDrive controller. Now, having access to BMW's technical information system makes this really simple if you have it, but if you don't, you're going to struggle because it's not visibly apparent how to get it off. 
Once everything is connected up, though, it, it works just fine. And also a benefit of having to remove all of this is that you're now able to route the cables from the head unit for the USB connection and the audio cable all the way behind the dash, under the wood trim. There's basically little funnels under this trim uh, to allow for cables for the power socket that goes in there. So the power connector for that. So there, there's already space to run the cables underneath the trim and then when you get to the glove box it can all come out just in there it's a little dark but you can see the two connectors there so what used to be there was the phone cradle which i think is superfluous anyway so if you remove that out the tension clip that holds the cradle in leaves a hole in the cubby so you can just route the two usb cables and the aux cable that you require for audio down all along this which means you end up with a really, really clean install. Now, and as far as the unit itself goes, it's a bit of a mixed bag, I'm going to be honest. The screen is great. I mean, all my, my normal functions work, they show up. Everything looks a little bit crisper, so even the surround view cameras and everything just look just a little bit better. It's great. So that's one of the five things I, I really love about it. It's a, it's a visual upgrade to an otherwise rather unremarkable and outdated screen. Switching to the Android system is really simple. You hold in the menu button and and we're back. So for some reason um, it didn't want to switch to the Android system but it's working now. So this is set up to look like ID6. It's a nice looking interface and it's simple to navigate but it does pretend to be something it isn't. So another thing that I have to say that I really love is the fact that you can have Google Maps as your navigation. So that in itself is great. You always have traffic. It's it's fantastic. So just heading back on the the iDrive brings you back to the main screen. The time and date synchronization was not easy to set up because it was set to Asia by default and I just didn't see that option, but it, it sorted itself out the, in the end. The third thing I love about this is the phone integration with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Now I'm using my my Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus to phone this video, so I can't show you the integration. It's really good. All you do is you install the updated version of AutoPlay if you've got the USB dongle that you have to buy separate for Android Auto and CarPlay. And whenever you plug one of those two devices, either an Android or an iPhone, into the USB, it'll just open up the CarPlay automatically. Again, I'll get back to this in the five things I dislike. The fourth thing I absolutely love about this is having Spotify in the car. Now, I use Spotify for all my music, and being able to just navigate it really seamlessly through the screen is just fantastic. So um, the audio quality is good. Navigating it is great. Obviously, Android Auto or um, Spotify isn't really made for such a wide screen, so it still only utilizes a small portion of the screen, although swiping to change your audio is, is really great. I mean, it's a... It's one of the main reasons why I wanted the system to start start with. Yeah, and then, uh, I mean, if you really need to have internet in the car, for instance, if your phone is dead and you're, you've got a mobile hotspot, it's really good um, if you get stuck. And again, this kind of ties in with being able to use Google Maps to navigate. It's really simple to find what you're looking for. So I think the fifth feature for me is just the connectedness of the system. Right, so on to the five things that are not so great about this system. First of all is the fact that there's no steering wheel controls. Because the audio is routed through the AUX port and the original iDrive has to be set to AUX input, whenever you try and navigate the steering wheel controls on my 6 series at least, it just says that the AUX input is active, so no steering wheel control is available. I suspect that this may be different in older BMWs that don't have the the scrolly wheel for changing audio etc if you just have the normal up and down buttons but certainly on my car it just doesn't allow you to change any audio the second thing that i that i don't like about the screen and again this would only really affect convertibles is that the screen is extremely glossy um, when the roof is down it is reflective to the point that you actually can't see anything on the screen now i'll try a couple of um anti-glare and anti-reflective screen protectors to see if that solves a problem. But yeah, it, it really isn't great. The third thing is the fact that the iDrive control works, but it's really shallow. It only works one level deep in the system. So you can see it works perfectly fine for navigating the main menu. 
If we go into settings, for instance, you can navigate the settings menu. But now let's say I wanted to go into navigation and change the, um, the program that I want to use for navigation. I can't scroll and select. So now I have to reach out to the touchscreen to change that setting. And this is the same for anything, really. I mean, even in um, if we go to Spotify as an example, so scrolling all the way past, go to Spotify, that's where it ends. So I can't scroll the Spotify list. I can't select anything. I can go back out of Spotify using the controller, back one layer in the menu. Um, but that's really it. And that brings me on to my um, fourth thing I dislike about the system. And that's the fact that it relies on touchscreen for some of the input. Now, I've never been a fan of touchscreens in cars. I think they're distracting. Um, and especially so in a BMW where I'm just going to sit back to where my normal driving position is. And where I'm sat now, if I'm busy driving and I want to change something on the screen, even at maximum reach from my normal seating position, I can't touch the screen, not in the furthest point, certainly not in the closest point. So now I have to lean in and touch the screen. Everything's really small. The interface doesn't work well for that. With Spotify, at least, it's simple enough to change songs because you can just swipe across the screen and there's a great big space for it. But if you're in something like Google or the the iGo navigation, it it really is a bit of a bugbear that, that the iDrive controller doesn't work to that depth. Again, it, I guess it's just one of the compromises. And then the, f the, the final thing that I dislike is the fact that the system is inherently trying to present, pre uh, pretend to be something that it isn't. So the music app, for instance, cannot be remapped to Spotify. You can only use it with the, whatever's there. And that relies on putting music on a SD card. Nobody does that anymore. I mean, I don't even really have a music collection that's downloaded. Everything is streamed. Um, similarly, the navigation you can map to something else, but where on a no on a real BMW ID6 system, this would show you the navigation information. This is just showing you a little picture. The Bluetooth is marginal at best. I leave my phone connected to the BMW system because, in my experience, the audio quality on these... Um, aftermarket head units is really, really bad with Bluetooth. And also because there's no external microphone, it's going to rely on the built-in mic, which is going to be problematic at best. Uh, videos in cars don't really care about. The car info just takes you back to the car system, which is fine. And I mean, that's really it in terms of the software. It's fairly basic. And you can use the settings to change the look of it to either ID5, even to NBT Evo, or if you want to freak people out completely, you can change it to the latest um, in, -con -touch, in Touch Control Pro by Land Rover Jaguar, um, which is a nice looking system, but that's even worse in terms of its pretensions to be something it isn't. So, yeah, I think the, the interface itself, it looks really good, but it's a lot of window dressing. And I think those are my top five things. From a technical point of view, I had to change uh, some of the deep settings because even though it was configured correctly, and I'll just go there to show you. So we'll go into factory setup. Again, the iDrive controller doesn't work in this menu. So you can just choose, obviously, you know, what kind of system you have, etc., etc. But when you go into the um, car type where you choose which kind of car you have technically my car should be the f1x 2011 2012 cic 8.81025 which it was set by default but then whenever i went back to the car system some of the elements were cut off the screen and i found the only way i could change that is changing it to a f1 f27 series cic which only came out with a 1025 screen so that's just a little thing but Again, if if you didn't know to go look in those settings, you wouldn't have actually known to uh, how to find it. Another annoyance was the fact that the AutoPlay app um, didn't work for Android Auto, either out the box or with the update from Whitson, who's the manufacturer of this head unit. I downloaded one from a different agent manufacturer called Pumpkin, and their system actually worked fine. And I believe that this is the same one that's used by Avenue SA because the interface looks the same as, as what I've seen um, on some other YouTube videos. 
So installing this version allowed me to have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Unfortunately though, it still st stretches out the Android Auto screen. Um, so it looks really stretched out and even enabling developer mode on the Android phone doesn't output it in a different way. Overall, the fit and finish of the screen is really, really good. I mean, it certainly looks high quality. Um, on the side there is a is an option to put your SD card in a reset. The fit and finish along the top is really good. It doesn't quite match up, but then it's not something you're ever going to see because, I mean, you're looking at it from the front, and so from the front, it looks perfectly fine. Um, it's sturdy as well because it mounts in exactly the same way that the original screen does, so it's not gonna fall, fall off, and it doesn't creak. So, I mean, you can you can touch it all over and it, it's really fine. Whereas this older unit, maybe just because of age, it's really creaky. So if you're going over rough road, I mean, that's, that's something that's going to annoy you. So overall, it's a mixed bag. Plus point is that you get a better looking iDrive screen for your factory system and you have the option to add CarPlay, which if it were only for those two things, at $500, it costs the same as what a breakout box that does only CarPlay and Android Auto would cost you for exactly the same functionality. Yeah, it's great having the option of Google Maps in the car and, and all sorts of other audio and using Spotify. But in as far as the functioning of this unit itself, it's a mixed bag. There are other launches on the market that you can use instead of this made to look like BMW launcher. For now, in terms of audio quality, it's perfectly fine. I can't fault it. And as far as my tick list for things that I wanted out of it, yeah, it ticks most of the boxes. Is it the best solution? Maybe, maybe not. Um, if you drive a coupe or a normal sedan, certainly you're not going to have the same issues I have with regards to reflection and glare. Overall, I would say I'm satisfied with the purchase, but not necessarily happy. At least it looks great. So there you go. I think that should give you a fair idea of what's involved um, with the installation. And feel free to ask any questions in the comments below. I'll also link um, to the supplier on Alibaba where I purchased this, purchased this unit. Uh, you don't have a minimum order quantity with them, so you can just purchase from them direct. They shipped it um, with DHL Express. It was shipped out of China on a Friday and delivered to my house the very next Monday in New Zealand. So really good communication from them. Um, the Android Auto Apple CarPlay adapter was extra. It's about $80. Um, on top of the head unit, but if you look at Avenue USA's unit for this same car, that would run you closer to $900 or $1,000 with all the bits and pieces extra um, for pretty much exactly the same thing. So, yeah, that's really it. Um, ask any questions in the comments. Like it if you like this video. I'll be doing a series called Living with the Six Series um, coming up soon just uh, to give some insights into using a 6 Series or having a 6 Series as your daily driver. Alrighty, take care.